Okay, so I'm. Welcome <laughs> 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 uh, on my lecture or some kind of uh, close enough approximation of lecture. And uh, my topic is to, you know, uh, document versus original uh, data. The idea behind is that <coughs> uh, in a lot of situation is uh, probably better to store the data as a document and not as a uh, like in a rational way in rational debates. <coughs> so some kind of basic facts are that rational data storing. Uh, I hope you all know it's a uh, tables and relations uh, between them. Uh, you, uh, usually, are used for it uh, rational uh, databases, or usually always. Let's call them SQL databases. Uh, it's uh, usually it's uh, used SQL to uh, query to them, and it's a kind of very old thing. I think more 30 years, 40 years, maybe more. I'm not sure. Uh, compare uh, like into you know, compare this kind of uh, way of data storing to the store data as a document. Uh, store data as a document is uh, just to take objects from. Uh, from memory and serialises uh, serialise them in, uh, into some, I don't know, <laughs> into some markup. Let's say, usually uh, these days is most used JSON or BASON. It's a <coughs> binary version of JSON. Uh, XML XML is not so popular these days. When I was young, it was very popular. <laughs> but now it's completely out. Now I'm too old, I guess. Uh, uh, the documents you can store in document uh, DBase, of course, uh, by name, or you can store them in relational DBase as well. I think we all did it, but uh, maybe we are some of you are not aware of it that it's a kind of storing documents. It's uh, usually it's done like serialize, serialize some data and put them in some big text uh, column or binary column, whatever. Uh, some DBases. Uh, supports documents uh, MSSQL supports currently uh, XML it's XML XML column in next version coming this year will be JSON version so MSSQL will be cool too <laughs> and uh, Postgres uh, Postgres Postgres or Postgres SQL support JSON uh, in this moment I'm not sure about Oracle do you know something yeah, uh, JSON or XML yeah, okay, whatever. They were with XML before, even before. Yeah? yeah. Good to know. I never use it. So, some kind of very brief history of uh, data storing is in the 80s, was kind of boom of relational debases. Uh, in 90s, uh, the relational debases kind of ruled the field, you know. Uh, they, they, like, this, uh, they, start to rule uh, through the bank systems. Uh, for bank operations, I think the relations debates are kind of created for it. You know, it's their kind of, I don't know, uh, main, uh, main purpose. <coughs> so uh, maybe some of you uh, recall that in the 90s, there was some idea of uh, object, object databases, but this idea dies very quickly. The idea was that uh, because everybody uh, everybody program in object languages, uh, we will just store objects in some kind of storage and that will, that will be all. I think this idea was killed by, by object, uh, object uh, mm -hmm. relation mapping and uh, I don't know why this uh, why this uh, idea didn't catch up, you know, uh, uh, because the I think it was very hard to do some some kind of querying about uh, about these objects and uh, the. Why do you think it was hard? Sorry. Why do you think it was hard? I don't know. I never tried. You know. If I if, if I can say because I I did some research on that the object databases. Or something like versus that object, like yeah, or, um, like text file almost. But it comes with a lot of 
uh, a lot of uh, weaknesses like you know in the 90s everyone wants to be able to refer the database by the scripts and not in the object database you are tied to the object logics in, if you are it's easy to store but it is horrible hard hard uh, tight coupling with the implementation of application uh, or the <coughs> tire in the future. I think that the other problem was that uh, these days, uh, maybe uh, uh, like today too, uh, is DBase used for integration between systems. And that's a horrible idea. I will get to it, but I think it's kind of common way how to work. You know, my opinion is that uh, application should own DBase, not uh, DBase should own applications. But yeah, let's. And the database is missing the methods, which are quite important. If you want to store the objects, actually store the method. That was the that was the problem in the object databases. It was in the complete schema. They weren't able to uh, be to provide good storage and also good object uh, execution platform because they need to execute objects to operate. Uh, uh, one more thing related to that, and that's the capacity of the storage at the time. Uh, uh, the large storage was uh, extremely expensive, yeah. and uh, coupling the, the data onto, let's say, columns uh, allowed better let's say, maintainability of uh, you know, keeping the data as small as possible. Uh, as small as possible. Yeah, Whereas working with the, with the objects or serverless data means that you basically waste a lot of <coughs> lot of space uh, by duplicated um, data. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, uh, so, but uh, after uh, Y2K, uh, the, the, you know, the problems uh, changed a little bit because uh, when the internet in 90s was like uh, mostly HTML pages or some uh, simple web stores, but after year 2000, a lot of kind of, uh, I think Google call it web two, you know, some complex application on the internet uh, became a reality, and with this kind of application, application I don't know how to call it. Like for example, Gmail is is nice uh, example, or uh, Google, Google Office, Google Tools. I don't know. I don't know. Google Sorry. Apps. Google Apps. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, it's nice example, and uh, with. Uh, this application and with this uh, wild spread of internet became really a lot of data. So uh, uh, the new way how to store data uh, became some kind of necessity. And uh, now came on the scene, uh, let's call them no SQL databases. Yeah, maybe I will do it in opposite. No SQL uh, databases uh, is really, it's really bad definition. It's like, uh, it's like define the dog that it's not a, not a, not a cat. So, uh, <laughs> but there is no better kind of description. Uh, I saw very nice to, uh, description of NoSQL databases with characteristic like it's uh, non relational. Usually, the NoSQL databases are non relational. Usually, they are open source. Usually, they are uh, cluster friendly, and usually they are schemeless. And uh, we uh, just uh, talk about this uh, uh, databases which are not more than 20 years old because I know, for example, Lotus Notes is almost uh, same uh, same old as uh, relational databases, but uh, and it's a document way of storing uh, data, but we 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 are not calling it a uh, NoSQL database. <coughs> NoSQL database uh, it's uh, possible a little bit split into kind of groups like aggregate oriented uh, DBase. Uh, nice example is key value DBase or document DBase. Uh, between key value DBase and document uh, DBases, it's not so big different. You know, usually key value DBases uh, they have some uh, some uh, possibility to have more than key for indexing. So and uh, the document databases uh, are kind of key value too, you know, so it's uh, almost one group. 
common base the basis I really uh, didn't understand how, how they work or what they are for so don't ask me about them please and graph basis uh, they are uh, used for uh, storing and uh, searching iterations so um, yeah I choose to yeah Okay, maybe I will get back to aggregation. I choose to talk about the document uh, document uh, data storing and document databases in general because uh, for us, like business <coughs> business application developers, I think it's a good way to go. I think that graph databases it could be interesting for us, but it's not a typical problem. Typical database we will use in for us typical pro problems. So I want to talk about uh, document uh, databases uh, or, or storing documents in relational databases and uh, how to, when it's good and when it's bad to use it. You know, this way kind of a data story. So uh, for talking about document, uh, you have to be familiar with the uh, term uh, aggregation root. Aggregation root is technically how to do it? Yeah, aggregation is a uh, uh, relationship uh, which kind of defined the the aggregated object. Okay, a nice example is order. Uh, when I have order and some lines of order, uh, the order uh, when I want to see some line of order, so I want to see fifth line of some order. Like a good example is book. Uh, when I when I uh, will tell about uh, when we talk about book, about page I don't know 120 I have to say it's a uh, page 120 of some book of Harry Potter I, I don't know book uh, so it's kind of when you address uh, the object which is an aggregation you address it through aggregate root that's a, a whole idea and uh, when we store data uh, that's the reason why. Okay, <laughs> why this data are called aggregate oriented databases? Because the documents which are stored there uh, should be document uh, based on aggregate root. Okay, so uh, let's start with relational uh, data storing. Uh, advantages uh, are for sure it's very efficient in data storage. But I think that these days it's not very really important because I think it's more important that uh, uh, for storing data uh, in cloud, it doesn't uh, doesn't matter how big uh, these data are, or um, but it's uh, more important how you want to work with this data, and uh, for this purpose data in the cloud data for uh, databases you pay more for them if you have bigger database you have uh, you have to pay more money than if you have bigger document uh, database you can save money to make a database uh, bigger if you use uh, document uh, document database uh, <coughs> for sure uh, it's very uh, it's very efficient in propagation uh, changes in related data that's the main purpose SQL strong query language it's big big advantage uh, everybody knows it it's very proven concept uh, I think a lot of lot of people in IT cannot imagine to uh, have some application without uh, relation uh, database it's a uh, it's very really lot of years of uh, development we had so the uh, databases are version 20 technically uh, I, I think Oracle is version 12. 13 I'm not sure 14 yeah and <coughs> it has uh, its control uh, consistency for us and it's uh, usually almost all of them has very strong uh, transaction support disadvantages are uh, it's very complex software the base uh, the base is like to make some changes inside I think it's not even possible it's uh, out of my imagination. Uh, I think the biggest disadvantage is that uh, it's not possible to 
horizontally uh, scape, uh, scape, uh, scapable uh, DBases to have uh, DBase on many computers, like in the cloud, in the cluster. Yeah, okay, I know it's possible, but it's not, not really, it's not helping uh, a lot, and it's uh, really a lot of problems uh, with this uh, with this capability. <coughs> the consistency check is good, but very slow. Yeah, I. Uh, and sometimes uh, when you store uh, uh, in a rational way data which are not, uh, it shouldn't be uh, stored as a rational. It's a lead in. Um, into history tables. I will try to explain. For example, uh, you you have order and you buy some items in this order, and you buy it in some moment. If you store it like typical rational way, you will create some uh, relation between line of order and uh, some product. But if you change uh, name of product, if you delete the product, if you uh, if you change the price, it's, uh, you have to say, okay, this price is from this day to that day, and then the joining is, you have to join it to the correct correct time, and it's kind of complex, and I think unnecessary complicated. In document, uh, in document way, this is possible to solve very simply, that you will just store it, everything, including the products. <clears throat> yeah, and of course, another big disadvantage <laughs> is the ORMO. Uh, it's a, uh, it could slow down a lot the system, the armor. It's a, uh, it's a really big piece of software, and it's a uh, kind of complicated to program it or uh, use it. Uh, storing data as a document. Again, uh, when I uh, talk about storing data as a document, it could be done in relational database or in document database. It, it depends. Yeah, technically, document databases are very simple software. I think uh, uh, most of them are open space, oh. <laughs> <laughs> open source. And it's uh, if you look inside, it's not really some kind of voodoo. It's kind of straightforward. Uh, you don't need any ORMO or things like translate objects. You just serialize, uh, serialize them and deserialize them. As simple as that. You have a flexible data structure. Technically, the data structure is not so flexible, you know, because usually you expect that you will have some data, but let's say it's driven by application, not by some internal logic in, uh, in the database. <coughs> it's uh, very, uh, very easy to scape, uh, scapable to many, uh, many in the cloud, to many computers. Yeah, it's not so simple. I talk with some of my friends who, uh, who spent a lot of time to do scalability. 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 Yeah, scalability. 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 Yeah, okay. And if you if you work, uh, if you create documents uh, based on uh, aggregate aggregation rule. You don't need transaction because uh, usually the transaction boundaries are uh, boundaries of aggregation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, this allows you to uh, store data very quickly because you don't have to. You don't give a shit about uh, every translation. <laughs> Uh, you don't care about uh, consistency, so you can really just take a uh, aggregation, uh, you know, aggregate and put it in the base. Simple as that. Yeah. And cons. Uh, <coughs> yeah, it's a suboptimal when you created uh, when you store the documents and uh, based on aggregation route, and then you try to uh, do some sums some counts uh, based on different uh, columns, then it's a primary key. It's a really uh, suboptimal, so I think that uh, it's not really good for kind of BI system, for data warehouses. Uh, the query languages uh, are not very really strong. 
I use the query language for MongoDB, which is one of the strongest for document databases, and still not good enough. But uh, yeah, I think good enough, but it's not SQL for sure. Yeah, uh, you will lose some storage space. And yeah, it's a kind of new technology, new technology, so it's not kind of accepted as a silver bullet by users. Uh, these days, when uh, like some uh, project is started, usually everybody starts with uh, D-based structure. Nobody thinks, nobody even uh, thinks that should I put it into the uh, document D-base or in the relational D-base or in the graph D-base. There is nothing like that. Everybody expects there will be relational D-base. So, that's uh, that is new, unproven. It's really it's really hard to uh, explain it to somebody that I want to use it. Okay. So when uh, when the <coughs> when it's good to store uh, data as a document, kind of obvious are, are audits or logs. I think there's no need to uh, to talk about it. Uh, files. There are databases specialized on storing live, uh, files, uh, document databases. I think it's a very good way how to start with uh, document database. And uh, as I said, to store order, I think it's a typical document problem because I want to kind of do footprint of the, of the situation. I want to store the kind of paper like uh, I want to store what the what the user saw, what the user bought in that moment. I don't. If somebody change name of a product, uh, the the user who bought the product saw different change. I don't want to propagate this change in. This is just my implementation order. detail, and you can implement it that yeah. correct way, even in relation to the yeah, but it's a uh, uh, complicated. It's a uh, slower to store, it's and it's really complicated. Yes. Really, just uh, take the object and store in the database. It's equally complicated that me uh, to have historical rooms, to have history tables, to uh, to have uh, to store you can, even. Uh, you can copy the product information to the order. The, the yeah, 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 but then you will store it as a document in relational database. Uh, that's fine for me. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, it was on the previous slide that leads to the history tables. It leads to a, a situation where you need yeah. to basically timestamp every yeah. single uh, detail that you have in the database. I don't want to. I, 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 I'm not saying it's a, it's a kind of yeah. impossible. It's just unnecessarily complicated. And maybe one more point is if you the, uh, the most strongest point of that is if you if business changes. Uh, legal requirements changes, and you have to implement different things to be displayed on the, for example, invoice or order. You don't need to migrate all, all data into the new database structures because what, they've been changed. What he says is that for order mm -hmm. in object database, you create basically a copy of the situation. Items yeah, of yeah. Your, that's the, the main thing. The very same thing can yeah. be done in can be done. relational database. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not try, I, as I said before, you can store document in relational database. It's, I'm just, uh, it's a when, when store data as document, not in the document database. Read the topic. <laughs> uh, I think I think the more point is you can definitely do so in a relation database, uh, but uh, for no reason you are actually creating uh, other tables and relations. You will most likely never be looking at the history of contract by looking into items. You most likely will traverse from the aggregate loop. There's no point to have the data available on you know on on, on first touch. It's it's definitely better. Uh, to freeze it as the paper that comes from the printer in the shop. Yeah, my so, point is so, so basically, no one is really uh, looking into the, the relation, relational nature of the data uh, later on. It's for basically just frozen data for just you know, documentation purposes. So uh, relation database is an overhead for that. It's uh, um, 
But instead of uh, instead of uh, migration, the data into new format, uh, you still have to make sure somehow that you know how to how to display the old data. Yeah, uh, but structure. you can do it very, uh, very easily in, uh, in you know in your application, like default value. But you still have to yeah. do this. You will meet anybody if you want. <laughs> okay, your question. No, it was just uh, uh, funny. A few years ago, there was like five commercial e-shops uh, in Czech Republic <coughs> that if you change price of product, it will change prices on all even invoices. Yeah, <laughs> I believe it. I done it through you know, yes. in one so of my is, Yes, you can do it in SQL, but it's well, it's, 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 it, it's it's done. It's wrong implementation of yes, but the yeah, there were like five commercial. Uh, Wrong implementations. So. Uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to do. Okay, let's stop this discussion and move on. I just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, but I, I, I just don't like the fact uh, putting uh, engineering failure. As okay, okay. You can, I, will, you uh, just I, I, will, I will explain it to you. <laughs> I am not telling to store into the uh, uh, document DBs or relational DBs, okay? I'm telling about to store it as a document or like relational data. The document is uh, you can store in the DBase, in the relational DBase, okay? So you can, do you understand me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is our, uh, this is our problem, which are, uh, I'm working on proof of concept. We have uh, application for loan. You apply for loan and we have to store the application. And it's another, uh, it's another, a good example of document way uh, how we should do it in document debase, but we did it in relational debase uh, instead. So because uh, we always operate with the application at once, with the whole application, we never try to work with uh, some part of this application. We always show it uh, at once together. We uh, when we uh, run it in uh, workflow, uh, we uh, use it at, as a whole. We uh, we never need some part of it. So uh, so for this uh, was the document to store it as a document much better solution than we did it now. And I I created the application and it's much faster to operate with it as uh, as a document. And we still so uh, we were still in the problem that we were thinking now we have to get this subset of data or this subset of data and uh, we always uh, been in problem like how much data we really need in some situation and it's kind of uh, annoying you know to have uh, the, uh, always the whole application uh, with all data it's really a good way and it's really good for caching you know the document debase cache the last used document in in memory so you can uh, access the whole object in a matter of milliseconds you know, if you imagine, if imagine that when you have to join data, it's really just to call ORMO on it. It's really take a lot of time. So this is another uh, example of uh, really uh, when uh, when storage as a document, it's uh, it's better than a relational uh, storage. Now this is example when I work for uh, Oriflame, we uh, create some kind of editor of catalog. And it was uh, kind of complex, yeah. Catalog, catalog section, uh, page, page section, offer, phantom, and products. I think I lost few uh, few layers between. And if we, uh, when we uh, through Ormo store this into the Oracle, it's take really long time to save, sometimes over the minute. So, but then we realized we never need it like separately any part of it. We always just. Load it, give it to the uh, customer, customer it, uh, then he give it uh, back to us and we store it, nothing else. And then we load it and uh, we are doing uh, we, we are doing some kind of translation, like publish of catalog, we create some version for other system for customers and so on. And there, uh, the structure was much, much simpler than ours because for editing we need a more complex structure. So we store it uh, as a document in, uh, in the top column and the performance was great. We didn't need a, a complex structure in our debase at all. That was that is the point of uh, of this example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm trying to uh, 
uh, when you want to do some statistics about the, uh, from yeah, the statistics data. are problem. But I, I will get to this, and we'll, or if uh, yeah, statistics are problem. But even when you use relational data, relational debates, after some amount of tables and uh, data, statistics are problem anyway. So that's the reason why I was creating data warehouses. So I think if you have behind your application some data warehouse, I think it's a good reason to start thinking about document debase. Because for editing data, you will use the document debase. For statistic, you will use data warehouse. Simple. But uh, yeah, it's possible to do statistics uh, in uh, in Mongo, for example. I, I, I told you with it, but it's not really optimal. So you just go for some kind of common combination? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's my point. OK, um, how to translate relation into documents? Uh, static, static lookups should never be in a debase table, my opinion. Uh, we, uh, we use, for uh, almost every lookups in uh, our systems, we use enums. And users are very happy about it. And other advantage is that when we uh, have some business rule based on this uh, lookup, we can just use the enum and it's strongly typed. We uh, we don't we don't have to have some uh, magic constant or magic things application. It's really good. And we the, uh, you know users always think we will change this and we will change that. But how many uh, lookups you have in the debase? Uh, some anybody ever changed? I think most of them are, are totally static. Yeah. Uh, dynamics lookups. I think. I think the best way how to store it is based on nature private key. Usually, every lookup has some kind of code. And you can st uh, store this code like uh, this uh, uh, duration. You need this duration. You will have the lookup in different in the document databases. It's not tables, it's collections. You will have collection with the lookup. And in the document, you will store uh, as a string some kind of primary key. Nature primary key is really perfect for it. And if you have one and a relationship, you can use, uh, or an and relationship, you can use the array. It's even simpler. Yeah, aggregation, it's uh, the easiest part. It's, uh, it's a document. When there is some aggregation between two uh, objects, it should be in one document. No question about it. Uh, yeah. The relationship between aggregate routes is a little bit trickier. Uh, usually, uh, the good news is that uh, aggregation create a uh, natural tra transaction boundary around the uh, aggregation, around, uh, around the aggregate route, uh, around the document. So uh, it's not a problem to save it uh, separately. But uh, these days, for example, uh, Mongo uh, even support transactions. So it's possible to use even in document debased transactions. <coughs> but uh, but uh, in many cases uh, it's uh, we uh, yeah document databases are not really meant to to store the data for banks to store data about uh, uh, about money because something shit could happen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> anything could happen. Yeah, okay. As I said, when you have data warehouse, it's really good, uh, good idea to think about documents. Uh, when you can, when you need to store a lot of data in short period, uh, uh, to, Thomas Thomas Mertz uh, could uh, could tell you about it. Uh, when uh, one aggregate route. It's almost the whole debase. It's our problem in uh, in Phoenix, the loan uh, application. The loan applications is ninety percent of debase in our case. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, when when you store when you store mostly uh, the data without the relations. Yeah, like a good example is uh, is Tomas here. Yeah, I think your uh, your uh, application is a good example of when should be used the documents because you usually store uh, logs 
and then uh, some uh, information about how to log, how users could log into the system. Yeah, I think it's no problem to use uh, uh, DBase, uh, document DBase for it, and it could be cheaper, and it could give you, uh, uh, like, uh, it's quicker and cheaper. Yeah, and uh, continuous development is a good, good example too, because uh, the data structure is flexible. And I think in, during the document, during the continuous development, it's big trouble to change a uh, DBA structure. But uh, when you have no DBA structure, you don't care. So I think mm -hmm. for co continuous development, it's a really big plus. <laughs> okay, and when it's not uh, so bright with the document concept, uh, yeah, of course. Uh, when the DBase is used as integration platform, we ever, everybody we, uh, we saw that. A lot of application uh, access one DBase. That's fail in architecture. Uh, you know, uh, if it's uh, my goal, I, I would never allow it. You know, applic uh, application own DBase, never DBase own application. <clears throat> yeah, when you need some kind of Data warehouse in inside your application. It's very common too, you know. Uh, after some time, usually it's uh, changed to some separate uh, data warehouse. But the starting is always, yeah, okay. I want to have this grid here and that grid there, and yeah, it's a way to help. Hell. Uh, when the aggregates routes are, it's a lot of them, and they are uh, kind of small. It's uh, opposite uh, opposite to our you know, low application example. And yeah, of course, this is kind of repeating the small data warehouse, you know, when you want to access the data from different direction, not through aggregate route, then it's really suboptimal. Sub yeah, okay, we are getting uh, to the end. Uh, I, I see a lot of sad faces. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I know what I meant with this uh, <laughs> sentence. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I will translate it. Yeah, uh, I think uh, everybody, uh, everybody in your application has some problem which could be used uh, through documents. I'm not telling through document debate, but through document. So, uh, so uh, I think it's uh, really good uh, to think about it. Is this typical relational problem or typical document problem? And store it based on uh, on the answer on this question. <clears throat> yeah, it's not uh, as I said. I think it's not good to uh, store the order as a relationship uh, as a relation because it's. It's uh, add complexity uh, to your problem, not uh, not uh, simplified. Uh, simplified. Yeah, and this scheme is a kind of idea how very very often is used document database because the uh, storing data uh, in document database is very quick. You can uh, send data into document database and then have jobs which translate it into the relational uh, database. I think. Uh, Tomasz Merz uh, uh, in their billing system use exactly this approach. <clears throat> so that's the good way to go when you need really a lot of uh, performance. And uh, for sure, I, I don't believe that uh, Facebook works on a relational DBase. I think it's no way how to put so many data into a relational DBase. They do it similar to this, you know, to this last scheme. <clears throat> What could uh, uh, DBase, uh, document DBase uh, bring you? For sure, lower price. Documents DBase are usually for free. Uh, Yet. Sorry? Yet. So far. So far, yeah. But uh, they are very simple and they are open source, so I think they will stay free for a long time. So usually, uh, you pay for services uh, to this, like for uh, support uh, to these uh, companies who develop. Uh, document basis. Uh, it's a uh, cheaper in cloud, for sure. Uh, I know in the Azure the document basis are much cheaper than uh, SQL. Uh, it could simplify your project. 
you don't need ARMA, you don't need, usually very often you don't need a transaction at all. Uh, it's kind of state forward. You just take an object, serve as I, and send to debate. It's really simple. Way to go. Uh, yeah, you can deploy it more often because of uh, you have flexible structure. And uh, you can st uh, store a very lot of uh, uh, data at once. And uh, it's really simple to scale, escapably. Scale, scale, but. <laughs> Put it on many computers. <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's all. Thank you for attention. <laughs>
tough, you know. So I used uh, LinkQ instead. And how does it look? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have some example here. I want to. Okay. Make it, maybe I can show you some. Okay. <laughs> this is LinkU. This is a uh, link to, uh, to SQL DBs, but it looks same to the to the uh, to the MongoDB. Yeah, there are some limitations. You you cannot for uh, the query into the MongoDB. Usually, uh, in uh, or, uh, relational DBs, you can create a select and do the select from it and select from it and so on. It's not possible in Mongo. When you in the moment you select the data, it's in your memory. So uh, when I use link queue and do this select from select, first select is in DBase and second select is in my memory. So it's not really a good way to go. So uh, I, I need to change a lot of, uh, lot of uh, queries and make, it, make them much more simpler, but it's a kind of long story. Yeah, the querying into the document DBase, it's not really paradise. You know, it's, if you are used to, uh, to use uh, SQL, you will be really disappointed. It's not so strong like uh, SQL or relationship uh, database uh, query languages, you know. <laughs> Maybe uh, the interesting point or uh, hint is that if you work with the objects in the real life that are documents or papers, like invoice, order, anything like that, in the a lot of developers run into serious problems trying to implement them as a relational object, breaking down, normalizing every single byte of them. And uh, when the users come and say, okay, it's pretty funny that you linked the invoice item into our uh, database of our products, but we don't care, we print it out and we need really that, that version of what was printed. And this is auditable by the auditors came in and they say, it's not matching. You have the problem. Repair your software, and the programmers go and write valid from and valid until columns into the all objects around, and they are just because the whole process is shelved into the papers. So those are the best candidates for the documents. When you have in some table valid from and valid to, it smells like document. Yes, it, but it sometimes like price lists or exchange rates or something like that. It's it's not documents. Uh, Sometimes it makes sense, it's but sense. it's kind of smell. It's not like it's quite hard. And at the end, you will provide the same functionality by the relation and database, like the like the document. You have some sort of normalization that oh, I haven't uh, duplicated the, the strings around, but at the end, you, it's not the uh, best way to go. It's, 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 yeah, I agree. And uh, again, when you have paper, for a lot of people it's simple. I just add something here or add something there. With the documents, really, you can do that. But So when people think about uh, some your object as a, as a really paper document, yeah, it's again smelling. Isn't it uh, like document in the device too? I'm, I'm, it's not 100% true, but it's just smell. Mm. How is the well? For, for example, in Postgre, how is the the, the the JSON data type different from just string data type? Uh, because uh, you you can do the query inside the JSON. I just guess I I know the same thing. I do, I know the XML column in uh, MS SQL. Mm -hmm. So you can in your SQL query uh, write down the query inside the column inside the so and it could be very powerful. I believe it's also related to, to actual data storage because usually in the relation database you have limited uh, string columns <laughs> and everything that is large then it's, it's stored com in completely different storage, uh, I mean physically. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas this column uh, is probably using some analogies of both. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that usually it's possible to create some indexes yes. over column inside the inside the XML columns. Or right? Okay. Right. Or even if you're using your Oracle, they have the they have, they can have the type. That means you can uh, limit the structure by the schemes if you want. 
and Israel might help you sometimes or not, and you have multiple schemes to that, so it's good for the document management systems. Yes. Okay. And yeah, I, if you provide the scheme, it can auto index all the content and so on. Yeah, and in a in a MSSQL it's possible to put uh, there uh, like word uh, word for uh, word document uh, Excel sheet or PDF and. Uh, uh, <coughs> MSSQL can create the full text index about this document, about uh, text inside this document. Sometimes it's useful. And it's uh, similar to this, you know. Any, any other questions? Okay, thank you.